VMware Workstation lets you run multiple operating system on your host computer. In this tutorial, you will have everything you need to learn about VMware. We will start by user interface overview. We will look at the concept of ISO files, as well as virtual machine folder structure. We will look at the virtualization. We will install Windows Server on VMware Workstation step by step, add virtual hard drive, manage linked clones, and do a lot more. Let's go ahead and get started. VMware Workstation user interface is very simple. When you launch it for the first time, it allows you to create new virtual machine, open virtual machine, or connect to the remote server. You can also have access to the menu. And in the menu, you can do a lot of different things in the file, edit, view, virtual machine, tabs, and help section. The concept of virtualization is very simple, but extremely useful. You typically need a single host machine with host hardware, host operating system. On the host machine, you run virtualization application, and you can create multiple guest operating systems. A lot of times, host operating system is a powerful version of Windows Server, which typically uses state-of-the-art, extremely powerful hardware. Guest operating systems could be different. You can run Windows 10, Windows Server, Linux, and some other operating systems that allow virtualization. For your virtualization software, you can use VMware Workstation. If you're running things on the Mac, you can use VMware Fusion. Or if you're in a corporate server environment, you can use VMware vSphere. Main reason companies choose to do virtualization, because it saves money. You can run multiple virtual machines on a single host. In the past, you needed dedicated hardware for each machine that you run. Having the ability to share resources on the host machine allows you to save a lot of money. Simplified administration and management also allows you to save costs. You need fewer number of administrators to manage host and guest machines. And with the movement to the cloud, it makes it even simpler. A lot of times, you may have to work with ISO files. And you might be wondering, what is ISO image? ISO stands for International Standards Organization. And ISO is the format of the virtual image of optical disk. For example, Microsoft distributes Windows 10 installation as ISO image. And if you type Windows 10 ISO download in your Google browser, you will find the link that will allow you to download Windows 10 ISO image. Once you complete the download in your Windows File Explorer, you will have file with the extension ISO. Windows 10 natively support opening and browsing ISO files. So you can double click on the image and browse the file and the content of the file. Because the content of ISO file is just a regular archive. And you can also open and browse the file using the archiver application, for example, 7-zip. In addition to browsing the content and extracting the file, you can mount ISO file to the file system, which would allow you to kick off the installation. And keep in mind that ISO became a standard for cross-platform software distribution, but could very well be used for distributing DVDs and other entertainment content. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Vadim Mikhalenka, and I have MBA and master's degree in computer science. Most of my career, I worked as a consultant, helping companies implement solutions. I learned a lot of technologies throughout my career, but more importantly, I developed a methodology how to learn new skills, which I would like to share with you as part of my videos. I also work as an educator in the community college, helping people to learn technology and find jobs. I started online training for everyone to share the knowledge and help people to reach their goals faster. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. A lot of times during the interview process, you might be asked the question, how do you install Windows Server? Even though there are multiple ways you can utilize to install Windows Server, including attended and unattended installations, one of the most common and easiest way is to install using virtualization software. For example, you can pick among multiple different choices available for virtualization software, like VMware Workstation Pro, VirtualBox from Oracle, or Microsoft's Virtual Machine. Download trial version from Microsoft and install Windows Server in the virtual environment. To download Windows Server trial in Google, all you need to do is type the keyword in Google, and it will take you to the right place. Because we're trying to download and install on the desktop, this is considered on-premises option, and we need to click Download Free Trial option that's relevant to that option. 
Depending upon what you're trying to accomplish, you can download Windows Server Installer in three different formats. ISO files is mimicking DVD file, so it's an equivalent of you getting virtual DVD. Azure will give you the file for Azure environment, and VHD option will give you the file for Hyper-V. Keep in mind that there are also other options available for Windows Server. We've selected the basic options for Windows Server 2019, but there is also Windows Server 2019 Essentials, Hyper-V, as well as the Admin Center application that complements Windows Server installation. Because I will be installing Windows Server on VMware Workstation Pro, I will choose ISO option and download the ISO image. If you do not own the license to VMware Workstation Pro, you can in a very similar way, by typing keywords VMware Workstation Pro Trial, find the link to the trial download. The latest version of VMware Workstation Pro at the time of this recording is version 16, but I will be using the version 15.5 because this is what I have license for. You can complete Windows Server installation in four steps. Fourth step is optional, but definitely recommended. You start installation by downloading trials. If you do not have virtualization environment trial, you can try VMware Workstation Pro or use other software that's available to you. You can also download Microsoft Windows Server trial. For the purposes of this demo, I downloaded ISO file. In step two, you need to configure virtual machine. To configure virtual machine, you need to go step by step through the virtual machine creation process wizard. To start the process, you click on the create new virtual machine button. Most of the time, I choose custom option because it allows me the most control. On this screen, you need to choose compatibility options of the virtual machine that you are creating. Because I'm using the most recent version of VMware Workstation 15.5, I'm okay choosing the latest compatibility. But if you are concerned and only have access to the previous versions of VMware, you choose the option here, which is the best for you. On this screen, I typically choose I will install the operating system later because it allows the best control. And I will be able to adjust and change settings if necessary before starting the installation. Here you choose the version of operating system that you're trying to install. In addition to Windows, VMware Workstation Pro can also install Linux as well as VMware ESX or other operating systems. If you choose the version that you're trying to install, VMware will try to pre-select and download template with remaining settings. Because there is no option of Windows Server 2019, the closest option will be Windows Server 2016. And this is what I will choose here for this installation. On this screen, you can give your virtual machine a name and choose where virtualization files will be located. During Windows Server installation, you need to make one of four choices. You have two server editions, standard and data center. And you have two server forms, desktop experience and server core. I will be installing standard edition with desktop experience. And to be able to quickly identify my virtual machine, I'm giving it the name that most describes what's in this virtual machine. Windows Server Standard 2019 with desktop experience. On the firmware screen, I choose UEFI. UEFI is the more modern replacement of BIOS. When you choose UEFI, one of the biggest benefits is that it provides secure boot as well as it allows you to boot from the large hard drives, drives with sizes 2.2 terabytes or larger, and the theoretical limit of UEFI is 9.4 zettabytes. I will not choose UEFI Secure Boot, but you can choose your option based on your needs. In the processor configuration screen, I will choose two processors and one core per processor, with the two total cores available to my virtual machine. On the memory screen, I will choose two gigabytes of RAM. Keep in mind that this option can be changed later. For example, if you feel that your virtual server needs more memory. I will choose network address translation to allow my virtual machine to connect to the internet. I will go with the LSI logic SAS, which is the recommended option by VMware, because it will provide fastest throughput for my virtual machine. And for the disk type, I will go with non-volatile memory express option, which is the fastest in today's world and recommended by VMware. Because this is going to be a new installation of Windows Server, I will choose an option create new virtual disk. And I will choose the size of 256 gigabytes. As well as I will choose the option of storing virtual disk in a single file, because this is the fastest option. I will also include the size of the drive 
into the file name, so I will be able to quickly identify the size in the file system. In the last step, I can quickly validate the settings to make sure I selected all the options correctly and customize the hardware if necessary. To install Windows Server on VMware Workstation Pro, we need to insert ISO file into the virtual DVD. To do that, we double click on the CD DVD slash SATA. And here, there is a room to insert ISO image file, where you would need to point to the ISO file that you've downloaded. Once you select the file, VMware Workstation accepts the new path, and you need to click OK. Next step is to power on this virtual machine and follow the installation process. Windows Server installation is done in the form of wizard, and most of the common choices are pre-selected for you by Microsoft. On this screen, I would recommend you click Next unless you're planning to make any changes. Here, you need to click Install Now button. I'm not planning to enter product key, so I will select I do not have a product key option. On this screen, you need to select the configuration that you're trying to install. Windows Server comes in two editions, Standard Edition and Data Center Edition. Each of the editions comes in two forms. Edition with the desktop experience, where you have GUI interface to manage your Windows Server, or Server Core, where you manage your server from command line. For my installation, I am going to select Windows Server 2019 Standard Edition with desktop experience. On this screen, I am going to accept license terms and click Next. I am doing custom brand new installation, so I am going to choose custom option and select the option Install Windows Only. This option shows us the virtual hard drive that we've created, and this will be the destination for Windows Server installation. I'm going to select this hard drive and click Next. This process triggered the installation, and Windows is going to incomplete installation step by step. Unlike desktop Windows installation, Windows Server installation keeps administrator account enabled. And in this step of the wizard, you need to configure password for your administrative account. Once you configure the password by entering it twice, you click the Finish button. To log in into your Windows Server installation, you need to press Ctrl Alt Delete button. But because this is a virtual environment, pressing Ctrl Alt Delete will do it on the host machine. So instead, you click on VM and you use Send Ctrl Alt Delete command to the virtual machine. Once password is entered, you push the Enter button and it gets you in. When you log in, into the Windows Server environment on VMware Workstation Pro for the first time, you see that the screen is small. You also see that you do not have a network connection. The main reason for that is because Windows Installation Wizard doesn't recognize VMware. And you need to install latest VMware tools and drivers. VMware provides default way to do it by showing the installation toolbar at the bottom of VMware Workstation. If you click Install Tools, all it's going to do, it's going to insert predefined ISO file into the DVD drive of the virtual workstation. I'm going to click Install Tools button and navigate to the file explorer inside Windows Server. As you can see, the virtual DVD was inserted into the virtual DVD drive. You can access it by clicking this PC and navigating to the DVD drive. Once there, you can trigger the installation process for VMware Tools. If you just follow the wizard and use typical installation options, you will install all the latest drivers for VMware Workstation Pro. And this would allow you to run the application full screen and get the network connection. Typically, at the end of the process, it is a good idea to reboot the server to make sure all the driver installations took effect. Let me give you a couple reasons why you might consider subscribing to online training for everyone. State-of-the-art skills Tips, tricks, and techniques we share with you here on Online Training for Everyone will help you today and in the future. We use scientifically proven methodology to create videos that will help you learn faster and retain more materials. When you click the subscribe button now, you will become connected and will be the first one to receive automatic notifications when new video is released. A lot of times you might be asked the question, how do you add hard drive to the virtual machine? To add hard drive, you need to navigate to the Devices section in Virtual Machine and select Hard Drive. Once you double-click, you will have Add option, which would allow you to add an additional hard drive. When you click on the Add, you choose Hard Drive, 
click next choose the type of the drive that you're trying to add i will go with the default option that vmware recommends which is the non-volatile memory express option and click next i'm going to select create a new drive i'm going to select the size and i'm going to type my own size which is 256 gigabytes and i'm going to store this as one single file for faster performance i'm going to click next i'm going to choose the location and the name of the file typically it might be a good idea to give drive a name which reflects the size of the drive as well as the reason you might be creating the drive in my case i am creating a backup drive for windows server and i'm showing the size of the file which would be 256 gigabytes this is the last step so i'm going to click finish now you see i have two drives first is the main drive for windows server configuration and second one is the new drive that i just created after you add the drive in virtual machine settings you need to boot into windows and complete five additional steps in computer management you would need to make the drive online you would need to initialize the drive create new volume and format the drive after you power on and boot this virtual machine you may need to do some additional steps once booted and logged in into windows you need to navigate into computer management tool and inside computer management select disk management as you can see our new drive shows up as unknown allocated drive which is currently offline the first step is to make this drive online to do that you need to click on the drive area and select online now drive is online but it is not initialized so the next step is we need to initialize the drive to do this you right click on the drive area in disk management and select initialize the drive it asks you what type of partition style would you like to select i am going to go with the default option of gpt now the drive is online but it is not allocated the next step we need to create a new simple volume for the drive you need to do right mouse click and select new simple volume and go through the wizard i am going to allocate the entire drive for the backup and i am going to assign new drive letter e the default file system is ntfs and i am going to give this drive name as well as indicate the size of the drive i will also leave perform quick format option checked to allow for quick format in the last step i am going to verify the settings and click finish the last step is to verify that the drive is available in the file system you can do it in the file explorer if you navigate to this pc now you see that there is a c drive where operating system is installed d drive which is the virtual dvd as well as the new drive we just created if you like the content please give this video a big thumbs up this tells us that you need more content like this and we'll make sure that you get it in the future every time you create vmware virtual machine it creates a lot of files in the folder structure and you might be wondering what are those files are for the cool thing is that you can browse and see all of these files within your operating system as long as you can navigate to the files location one thing i would recommend you do is to enable file extensions in your file explorer you can do it by navigating to the view tab options and then selecting different options based on your configuration and based on your needs specifically on hiding some system files and some protected operating system files one of the most important files is the vmx file vmx file is just a text file and could be opened in the any text editor you can see all different configuration settings for your virtual machine vmx file is also the file vmware is looking for when you try to open virtual machine that log file is the main log file which captures everything that's happening in the virtual machine vmware manages log files and renames them always maintaining the current vmware.log file and also keeping an archive of everything that happened in the past log file is just the text file and can be opened in any text editor that nvram file stores the state of the virtual machines bias it is typically stored in the same folder where a vmx file is it is typically a rather small file and uses proprietary format from vmware that vmdk file contains the content of the virtual disk drive vmdk file is typically a very large file because it contains everything that's stored in the disk drive typically every virtual drive on vmware gets its own vmdk file 
For example, in my configuration, there are two 256GB hard drives configured in VMware. Each one of these hard drives has multiple VMDK files associated with them. Because I created the snapshots of virtual machines at the different points of time, for every point in time, VMware took a snapshot of the hard drive as well and stored it as a different VMDK file. That VMAM file is the virtual machine's page file. This paging file backs up guest memory into the host operating file system. It typically only exists when virtual machine is running. And every time you create a snapshot, it creates a snapshot of the memory at the point of time of the snapshot. The MSD file stores metadata about snapshots. It is typically a very small file which is written in the text format and it allows VMware to organize all snapshots associated with particular virtual machine. You can also see visual representation of all snapshots by navigating to VMware Snapshot, Snapshot Manager. VMSN file typically stores a snapshot state at the time you take the snapshot. And last but not least is that .vmss file. That .vmss file is the suspended state file, which stores the stand of suspended virtual machine. Please make sure to check out available downloads in the description section of this video. One of the coolest features of VMware Virtual Machine is its ability to take snapshots. To take a snapshot, you navigate to VMware menu and select Snapshot. And you have multiple options here, including the Snapshot Manager. VMware Snapshot allows you to preserve state and data at specific point of time. It basically captures all the files of the virtual machine at that point of time. And the coolest ability is ability to restore back to that point once you took the snapshot. For example, you might go through the process of installing Windows 10 and configuring Windows 10 with additional features. And at each point of time, you would like to take a snapshot. So the first snapshot you may take at Windows 10 vanilla install once you completed Windows 10 installation. Second snapshot might be Windows 10 when you install all the patches and updates. Third snapshot might be when you install Microsoft Office. And the fourth snapshot might be once you install corporate applications. Typically, it's a good idea to take a snapshot before you take major actions on virtual machine. For example, if I go to Snapshot Manager, you can see that I took two snapshots. I'm running Windows Server as a client operating system and the first snapshot I took before promoting this server into the main controller. Second snapshot I took before running Active Directory Restore, and I could at any point of time go back and launch Virtual Machine Client at that point of time. In VMware Snapshot Manager, you can navigate between snapshots and you can add and modify the name for the snapshot and add additional description if you'd like. You can also see the image of the screenshot at the point of time when snapshot was taken. As you navigate through snapshots, you can select particular snapshot and clone the snapshot to create a dedicated virtual machine with the snapshot that was taken at that point of time. You can also preserve and protect snapshots by using the features of VMware Workstation. When we were just starting our mission, we wanted to pick the name that would best describe our values. And this is the main reason why we picked how to analyze data.net, because the core of our mission is covering questions how and why in every video that we make. Make sure you consider this when you're making your own decision whether to subscribe to the channel or not. Because online training for everyone is one of the few channels that provides you with the real answers. Sometimes you may need to create a copy of the virtual machine. The process of creating a copy is called cloning, and there are multiple ways to clone virtual machine. One of the easiest way to clone is to copy the folder content. For example, if you navigate into the folder where the content of your virtual machine is stored, select all the files, click copy, and paste it into your target location, you will ultimately create a copy of the virtual machine. After you copied it, you would need to find and open VMX file and go through VMware's wizard to answer if you copied it or moved it. In addition to copying just the folder structure, VMware supports more sophisticated cloning options. When you create linked clones, you have a concept of parent virtual machine as well as linked virtual machine. Your parent virtual machine 
might only have Windows 10 installation, and Linked Virtual Machine might have Windows 10 as well as Microsoft Office installed. Using this concept allows you to save on disk space because Linked Virtual Machine only stores the Delta, which is in this case Microsoft Office. The coolest thing is that you are not just limited to one linked clone. You can create as many linked virtual machines as your resources allow. And all of these linked virtual machines can have different configurations, as long as they maintain parents' base configuration, in this case, Windows 10. For example, the linked clone 1 might have Microsoft Office installed in addition to Windows 10, but linked clone 2 will have installed Windows 10, Microsoft Office, QuickBooks, and Adobe PDF. To make a clone of virtual machine using VMware interface, you need to navigate to the VM menu, click Manage, and click Clone, and VMware takes you through the wizard of cloning virtual machine. I am going to select the first option, the current state in the virtual machine, which will create the linked clone from the current state. I am going to go with the first option to create a linked clone. On the next screen, I am going to put my cloned virtual machine into the dedicated folder and give it a name Windows Server 2019 Linked Clone 1 and click Finish button to complete the process. Once Linked Clone is created, you will have two virtual machines, your original parent virtual machine Windows Server 2019 as well as the cloned virtual machine which has a name Windows Server 2019 Linked Clone 1. In the file system, Linked Clone has its own set of files in the dedicated folder. And as you can see, the sizes of the files are rather small because only Delta information is stored in the clone virtual machine. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Skills that you learn here will be helpful for you now and also in the future. You also get opportunity to help other people by answering their questions and helping them solve their challenges. If you like the content, please give this video a big thumbs up this tells us that you need more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.